Welcome, dear students, to, um, to continue our course this year through online classes. Um, I'm glad to be in contact with you again to resume the classes, um, even if it's online. Um, but there are a few things I would like to clarify before we start um, the course. The first thing that everybody should have model in this um, laptop or cell phone. You have to have the program model because all the classes and all the lectures are uploaded there. Uh, this is the first thing. The second thing, I have already put some materials there regarding the new plate trifles we will be studying. Uh, so I hope you have a look at it and downloaded the text of the play because we are going to read part of it and themes, which I have also posted at World Document. And I also put it uh, PowerPoint lectures, uh, which covered the whole play. And I'm going through this Google uh, Meet, uh, explain by video the classes, those slides, those PowerPoint slides. And if there is a need, then maybe we can have um, a live. We, we all be together and we meet, and then you can ask questions and whatever subjects you want. Uh, so you let me know. Um, so this is said first. Uh, what I would like also to emphasize is that you need to have my email and it is uh, written on the first PowerPoint slides with the title introduction. So if you just click it, open it, and then you see my email down and that you need it if you have any question, anything you want to ask about. I don't prefer messages on telephone except the representative. But there is a few, please use my email and write whatever question you have. And uh, I'll be happy to answer your questions, no matter how how many or how long. Uh, so this is very important. Um, another thing, if you have any problem about anything, you cannot open a document, you cannot have an access to model, uh, any problem with any te technologies or anything, then you can also write email about it and we can solve it up. So today, as I said, um, we will start with the play Trifles by Susanne Glaspell. And if you go to uh, model, as I said, you can download the play and you need it uh, with you. I need you to open it. And I, as we read, I want you to read from the play, um, not only the PowerPoint, but from the play itself, as we used to do in a class. All right. Um, so the first, I would like you to go to PowerPoint with the title introduction that is posted on model on uh, month uh, March to April. March to April, I don't know, I think, it's, um, I don't know. March to April, you go there and then you will see a PowerPoint called introduction. You open it and then you see the first page is the title of the play uh, and introduction and my email. So, um, there is um we need as we used to have something about the author herself a biography about the author who is she where did she grow up what happened so uh, i would like you please to go with me as i'm going to read um on my other screen uh some brief biographical uh, view about uh, susanne glasspel who's a women writer an american female playwright and we are going to deal with her play this month all right i'm going to read from the slide powerpoint slide with a title introduction so Zinni glaspell is regarded as among the first feminist writers now maybe you are acquiring what is feminist what's the meaning of feminist and maybe for most of you you know what's feminist feminist is a person who supports women issues like the equality in the payment, um, equality in job, having the same jobs, um, voting, although most countries around the world now have voting for women as well, um, all the rights given to women as equal as men. And if you are supporting this, then you, uh, and if you are a woman, then you are a feminist, a feminist writer, a feminist advocate, whatever. So we call it feminist and the name is feminism. So she was among the first who advocated the role of women in society. And she was a daughter of a hay farmer 
and his wife, Alice Keaton, a public school teacher. She grew up in rural area below the bluffs of the Mississippi River that's in America, along the western edge of Davenport, Iowa. And, well, for some reason I felt I should show you the map of America and show you what Iowa is. And you can see here two maps, the one on the left, um, well, we have an arrow, a yellow arrow, uh, pointing to where the state of Iowa is, so it's just in the middle of America. And the other one, the other map to the right, shows some something about the um, agricultural map of Iowa, what is famous for growing, um, yeah, the customs perhaps, and other details. Okay, having a fairly conservative upbringing, what's conservative? A conservative person is a person who is so much attached to the values and the norms of her society. He or she does not want to go break these rules, these norms. So they are very much attached to it. They are called conservative. And sometimes we hear on the news that a conservative party won the election. So that's the, the party which or the person who support all the traditional values of a society. Not so much liberal or outgoing. Okay, Susie, that was her nickname, was remembered as a precocious child. What's the meaning of precocious child? A child who loves animals and always um, love to save um, dogs or cats. They are strained, they have no owners, they might be wounded or hungry. And she saved them, she brought, bring them home and she fed them, takes care of them. So that's, that's the kind of woman she is, a child. She then joined government school and showed a special talent in writing. Now you can see her pictures uh, to the right. By age 18, she was earning a regular salary as a journalist for a local newspaper. So she worked at the beginning of her life as a journalist in a local newspaper, a newspaper in her own town. And by 21, Glasper enrolled at the Drake University. Against the local belief that college made women unfit for marriage, because at that time, um, well, we are talking about America here in the, in the by the mid of the 19th century. So that's still the thoughts and ideas about um, the women role is in her house, in care of her kids, raising children, um, cooking, cleaning. This is the thought that that's where women is or should be. But having university education, going to college, going to life, being a journalist, traveling, is not fit for her. That's the common thought at that time. So she went to Drake University and challenged that thought. She wants to have more education, have more knowledge. Susan fell in love with George Crum Cook, a wealthy classic professor, a gentleman farmer. The couple got married and moved to New York. Together, they established American first, a non-profit theater company. So both of them were having this passion for theater, for performance, for writing, and together they established a theater a building where they presented the plays there. And um, Yes, that was the first American non-profit. So they don't charge people to come to their theater. It's a free. Now, Glassville is known to have composed nine novels, 15 plays, over 50 short stories, and one biography, often set in her native Midwest. Now, why I am going to show you a map of the Midwest? Because you might often hear the word Midwest in American movies, and you wonder what is Midwest. So I have put to the right a map of America where the red states are what they call Midwest. So to the right, the state will be called West, and to the left, far left, they will be called East, and those in the South, South, South states, right. Okay, these semi-autobiographical, so they are kind of semi-autobiographical. What do we mean by this? Meaning that when she writes a play or a short story, it's often from what's happening around her in her own town or in the state. She was a journalist. She show, often would read stories about accidents, about events, about things, problems. And from those stories she reads about, from the stories she hear about, she creates her own novels, her own short stories. So they are kind of, autobiography coming out of her real life experience. Explore contemporary social issues. Okay, this is again the map 
what I'll show you the west, east, south, midwest. Okay. Um, now we are done with this part. And I hope it's it, it, it's very short, but I hope it's clear for you now. Um, something about the author herself and the time and what what are we going um, to deal with. So in the next slide, I'm going to explain the coming um, details of the play with a slide called Lecture One, Trifles Lecture One. And that is where um, you need to go now. Just need to now um, close the recording for this one.